Have you ever bought something because you're 100% sure that the item on the product page would look different than what they actually sent? Well, this is Super Mario Land DX. This game is an AliExpress special, it costs $5 and it's clearly a bootleg. I mean, what's going on with this art? Mario's starting to look a bit worn out there, isn't he? Is it me or does he look more like a Russian bricklayer than an Italian plumber? Is this picture from something? Is this a meme? Is this an NFT? Is this what NFTs look like? You guys would tell me if this is what an NFT looks like, right? So somebody somewhere must have drawn this picture, and probably somebody else took that picture and slapped it on this Game Boy cartridge here. You can see the beautiful squished background from Super Mario World, the model number DMGLGSN-REP. I think REP is for reproduction because down here on this Game Boy logo it says Repro. That's incredibly hard to see. It also has the Nintendo logo and the official Nintendo seal of quality, so I guess it must be real, right? If we flip the cartridge over, we can see Made in Japan, which is not, and Patent Pending, which I don't know, maybe it is. And it feels very cheap. It's flexible in a way that a Game Boy cartridge should not be flexible. The case it came in is also all wrong. It's sharp in the worst possible ways, difficult to open. But we did finally find something that does not have the Nintendo logo and does not say Made in Japan. The Made in Japan on the bootleg made me think for a second it might have been made using a real mold for a real Game Boy cartridge. However, these slider tracks are all wrong and the screw location is also wrong. So they must have made this mold themselves, possibly based off of a lazy 3D scan. The color's wrong, the plastic's wrong, the screw's wrong, the screw type is wrong, and you can see from the bottom there's a cutout for a chip for some reason. So since Super Mario Land DX says it's a reproduction cartridge, you might think it's a reproduction of Super Mario Land, but it's not. So let's plug it in so I can show you what I'm talking about. So while the game turns on and plays, I noticed pretty quickly that there's something a little bit wrong with it. The graphics were glitching out, the buttons weren't very responsive, and I didn't know if it was a problem with the cartridge itself or with my Game Boy Color, which I hadn't used for a few years. Now the problem with the buttons was a problem with my Game Boy Color, which I did fix, but the problem with the graphics itself, well, let me show you what I realized when I plugged in my official copy of Super Mario Land. There's definitely something different here. Are you starting to see it yet? Here, this should make it a lot more clear. Yeah, so Super Mario Land isn't in color. So the problem with the glitchy color in Super Mario Land DX has less to do with the fact it's a horrible quality bootleg and more to do with the fact that it's a fake game. Super Mario Land DX is a ROM hack. Somebody took Super Mario Land, added color to it, posted it to the internet, somebody took that ROM, put it onto this cartridge, packaged it, sold it, and I bought it. So I can't find a lot of information about Super Mario DX. Obviously it's not a real Nintendo game. I was able to find that somebody named Toruz uploaded a ROM for this game in 2019 to a site called romhacking.net, but the screenshot of the title screen there looks different than the title screen in the copy that I have. So I don't even know if this is the same hacked version of the game, or if they had to change it to make it work on a cartridge, or if an entirely different person made an entirely different colored version of this game. All I know for sure is that Nintendo did not make Super Mario Land DX. So this bootleg game is not actually a reproduction because they are not reproducing something that already existed. So what's next? Well, let's do a teardown and see what's inside. Okay, this teardown should be pretty easy. Looks like we've just got one screw here on the back. It's a tri-wing. There we go. Now let's just pull it apart. Just kind of slides out of place like that, looks like. We have the two halves and we have a small circuit board. There's a hole drilled here in the corner that is pretty much broken through there. Not sure what that's for. Okay, there's not a lot to see here. There's nothing even holding the board in directly. They're just two little pegs that it slotted into right there. So there's two chips, a small MOSFET, and a small surface mount component that is probably a capacitor. So this chip on top here is a two megabyte flash chip. You could fit a lot of different Game Boy games on that. And below that we have 32 kilobytes of SRAM. There's probably a memory controller underneath this blob. And here we have empty pads for a battery. So if there were a game on this that needed to be saved, you could save it. You can't save your game in Super Mario Land, so this is empty. There's a few extra pads here, so you can probably use this board with different parts or at least different games. On the back side, we have traces and test points and not much else. Now let's see what's inside the real deal. So this is a different kind of screw. This is a game bit. It's harder to find than the Tri-Wing one, but very easy to get online. So once again, just the one screw, and this should pull apart. There we go. Already you can see there's a lot more going on. This is copyright 1989 Nintendo. More traces and a few extra little cutouts here. So the board is labeled DMG-BEAN-02. 
This part here is labeled 103 capacitor symbol C2. This is 103 capacitor symbol C1. 103 is the size. Even though these look like resistors, these are actually axial capacitors. And there's an unused spot here for a radial capacitor C3 with a value of 10U or 10 microfarads if they were to actually use one there. There's still two chips here. Both these part numbers start with DMG, so these are proprietary Game Boy parts. So this Nintendo branded part on the left here, they call a mapper, which is basically a memory controller. And the sharp branded part is a ROM, which holds the game. Not very complicated, but pretty neat. So there's not a lot to see here and that's all I have. Please think about subscribing if you found this interesting. And as always, thanks for watching.